Chapter 40 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carissa Bacon. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter 40. Margaret, Duchess of Newcastle, 1620, Ballard. The youngest daughter of Sir Charles Lucas and the wife of the Marquis of Newcastle had from her infancy a natural inclination to learning and to spend so much of her time in study and writing that it is much to be lamented she had not the advantage of an acquaintance with the learned languages which would have extended her knowledge refined her genius and have been of infinite service to her in the many compositions and productions of her pen in sixteen forty three she obtained leave of her mother to go to oxford where the court then resided and was made one of the maids of honor to henrietta maria the royal consort of king charles i and when the queen by her rebellious subjects was unhappily forced to leave england and go to her native country she attended her thither at paris she met with the marquis of newcastle then a widower who admiring her person disposition and ingenuity was married to her in that place in the year sixteen forty five she was said to be the most voluminous dramatic writer of our female poets that she had a great deal of wit and a more than ordinary propensity to dramatic poetry mr langbane tells us that all the language and plots of her plays were her own which is a commendation preferable to fame built on other people's foundation and will very well atone for some faults in her numerous productions the catalogue of this lady's works tragicomical poetical romantical philosophical and historical both in prose and verse would occupy pages her person was very graceful, her temper naturally reserved, and she seldom said much in company, especially among strangers. She was most indefatigable in her studies and contemplations, truly pious, charitable, and generous, an excellent economist, very kind to her servants, and a perfect pattern of conjugal love and duty. End of chapter 40